Hey there friends, what's poppin'? My name is Rabbit and welcome to episode number 47 of Let's Blindly Play Through Paladin's Quest for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. In our last episode together, we finally were successful in uncovering the boots for Medea, specifically the Sophie's boots. I was losing it a little bit and really second guessing myself whether I had overlooked a path or there was something that I had missed in some way, somehow. But it was not me, actually. It was behind door number one, which actually I think was the sky door is what it was called. I had to use the ring of Sophie to get into it. Then we also explored to the right hand side a water door, which took us back to the magic school where all of this, this journey began with Chesney by himself before we'd ever met Medea, before anything even made sense. So I'm not sure if that's technically where we're supposed to go. This leaves a lot of questions in my mind because there was another one of those water doors at the very top of this tower or this area because I think we're actually in the basement of the tower. I don't even know where we are, you guys, but the point being, we've got a couple of places to go. Almost too many options if you ask me, but we'll just tackle it one door at a time. So let's come over here to the earth door. Again, as the other doors have said when we inspect them, there is a crest beneath the earth inscription. There is a small hole beneath that. We know that the boots are the key. So let's just grab them, shove our foot in there, I guess, and they fit perfectly. Let's head inside. Now this could technically take us to where we're supposed to go, but I'm going to guess, and I had offered up this hypothesis at the end of episode 46, when we took that door to the right, door number two as I've been calling it, and it brought us back to the magic school. The headmaster was standing and blocking the exit, whereas previously he was not in that position. So I'm guessing we're going to have to talk with him and he's going to be the one to provide us with where we need to go next or the information regarding where we need to be going next and what we need to be doing. I mean, I guess technically we know that we need to destroy the other ancient machine since we took care of Neugren, Dalgren does still exist. So our problems are far from over. Also, our interpretation of the situation is complicated now because we did find out from a robot over in the sky section that I guess Gabnet had wanted to control the machines in order to essentially enslave all the life forms here in Lenas. And it seems, at least according to this robot, now it could be bullshit and I don't know who really I'm supposed to be trusting and who's just full of lies, but the robot said that Cormu and Sophie didn't agree with this and I'm sure they thought Gabnid was nuts. Maybe they were all peers at one point and then Gabnid kind of lost his marbles. I mean, it's, it's hard to know and who can really say we're piecing together everything that happened in all of these relationships and the roles that these individuals played. We're basing all of our knowledge and understanding of who they are and what they did exclusively on random inscriptions that we're finding or even more random descriptions that folks offer to us in passing. So I don't know who's good, who's bad, and what is even going on anymore, <laughs> to be honest with you all. So I guess we're just going to take it in stride and hope we figure out the correct answer. I was sharing with y'all in our last episode, although I've offered this up numerous times as well, that I am just digging the story. I feel like the deeper and deeper we get into everything, the more it just feels like, wow, someone really took their time thinking about a lot of things. Woohoo, Medea gained a level. But as I was saying, I just really in general appreciate the thought that was put into not only the narrative itself, but the pacing of it. I think I've shared this with you guys in this playthrough. Maybe I haven't, but I think one of the things that has in the past annoyed me on occasion with some games and the stories as they're, you know, handed over to you is when the pacing is not done well. So even if a story is very immersive and it makes sense and there's a lot of mystery to it and you're uncovering things that are impactful not only to the protagonist and the team but the world that they are in if they just throw everything at you super quickly or everything's predictable i just think it's a little harder to feel 
I don't know, as invested in everything. Whoa. Oh, I think that's just, okay. Is my perspective just thrown off or what am I <laughs> looking at right now? But hey, a water card. We are drowning in cards, y'all. I'm not sure what to even make of all of this, but y'all will be impressed with me. I did organize my bag just a little bit. I didn't want to spend more than like two minutes just throwing some things around and rearranging a couple of things, but I sadly discovered you can neither sell the mini bottles nor can you just discard them, which is weird. I guess the best maybe you could do if you don't like them being here and they appear as clutter to you, you can move them to the bottom of your bag so you're not often interacting with them. I don't know, just a thought. But anyway, I will give this to Chesney because I had previously given Medea the good cards that we had uncovered. But Great Gabnid left a voice recorder with me. <gasps> Shall I play it? Uh, yes, please? Gabnid, stop this absurd thing. You're going insane. My beloved Sophie, I am not going insane. I am spreading true peace across Lennis. You are taking the lives of the people of Lennis too lightly. They are alive too. Sophie, don't interfere. Do you want to end up like Cormu? Y'all, I fucking called it. In our last episode, I was saying that I wonder if what went down is that the three of them were all friends or they all maybe were like gods or demigods or something and Gabnid let his power go to his mind or he started doing things that were a little unethical or questionable when they're supposed to be protecting the people of Lennis. And I'm guessing maybe Cormu and Sophie stood up to him, or maybe Cormu was the first to actually stand up to him. Cormu got his ass whooped by Gabnid, and now Sophie is finally stepping up to the plate and reiterating what Cormu kind of expressed, that, hey, bro, you're being a little cray-cray. I need you to fall back a bit on this plan. But, huh, that's interesting. Do you want to sleep forever? Let's leave Lennis and return to Raiga. Let's go back to Raiga, our home. Sophie, I give you this. If you think I'm going insane, use this anytime. This is... What? Oh dear, I'm sorry. The machine seems to be breaking down. What? What? You can't just leave me with that. That's... Y'all. Yeah. That's crazy! I feel like we're Nancy Drew and solving a, a murder mystery over here. Just holy crap, you guys. And what the fuck? I guess... I looped myself around. I might go back because I feel like I'm now out of order and I probably wasn't supposed to listen to that voice message this soon. Do you guys know what I'm saying? I kind of want to go... Oh, maybe this is where I'm supposed to go. Whatever. We'll just grab shit and make the most out of it. Hopefully everything will loop us around properly and we can always piece together everything on our own. But... I don't know. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm just still trying to process everything. What is going on? So Raiga is a place. It's not It's not a spirit or a specific deity. I think that's what's also kind of throwing me off now too, hearing, I'm guessing that was Sophie who had offered that up, like let's go back to Raiga, our home. So they were three beings from this other world and they came to Lennis for what? Woohoo, mouth gained a level. It also is making me think more about my theory about the dragon. That perhaps Cormu wasn't responsible again, and maybe Gabnid framed him, or Gabnid used the tools of Cormu, or Cormu might have been operating under a misunderstanding. It's just so crazy to think about how all of these clues and all of these pieces of the story and of all these characters are now kind of being woven together for us. Just fascinating. Anyhow, it's been a while since anyone's come here. I've been lonely. Great Cormu and Great Sophie are gone. Great Gabnet is gone too. I've been lonely without them. So did they make these robots? And then they just left? But did they leave of their own volition? Or did Cormu get murdered and possibly Sophie too, I guess? All right, and another level for Chesney. You guys, we are flying through these levels. I guess there's quite a bit of XP to be had here, but another bee feather. I think I'll give this to Chesney as well. Medea's sort of been hogging all the shit. So here we go. Purpurd's wings and Chesney's quickness went up four points. Not bad, not bad. Looks like there's one more set of stairs, and then this is probably going to take us to where we entered, I think. Think? Yes. Assuming this chest is empty, then that is correct. 
So let's find out, shall we? And woohoo, it looks like that is where all this fun began. I think we got all the chests. I really don't want to run back through and look at all of them. I'm pretty sure we, we did. Right? God, you guys, I hate second guessing myself. You know what? It's fine. We're just going to roll with it and not sweat the small stuff. But ooh, there's one over here that I bet my ass sure would have missed this. So I'm glad I did kind of loop around there. So let's grab the Gubo's milk. And I will be nice and give this one to Medea since Chesney did get two things in a row as well. We even out the playing field. So here you go. Enjoy your extra two points to strength. Hmm, wonder if that would have been better swapped though, where Chesney had gotten the strength and Medea the quickness? Meh, it's all a wash at the end of the day, but okay. We came full circle, we should have gotten everything, so let's take this elevator and see what awaits us on the other side. That's crazy though to hear that all three of them Gabnid, Sophie, and Kormu were at one point here? Like, where even is this? It seemed like it was a part of. Oh, a fire card. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> We've had fucking fire from the start. Actually, I don't think Medea or we have been in the position to learn any fire spells, so Medea doesn't have it still. But with that being said, I don't know why they thought to give us a card now. Perhaps we'll be finding another spell shop soon? Who even knows? But oh, a wind sword. Okay, I'm guessing this is a nice upgrade for Chesney. Seems a bit random to uncover something like this here, but we will roll with the punches as usual. So this Psych BM, 281, 265, 265. Oh, so it's not better, unless it has a special effect. So the Psych BM, I'm not sure if you guys have had a chance to see it. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I can never remember which fights you've stuck it out with me through and which ones end up getting cut out, but it ends up firing kind of like a laser beam and it has the ability to paralyze the enemy. I'm not sure what the sword does, so why don't we just equip it and see, oh, and I could get rid of the shield, but I don't really want to. I'll still hold on to it. Let's just test out and see what effect this sword has. If it doesn't seem considerably better than what I had with the Psych BM, I'll just switch it back. You guys already know, I am not afraid to tinker with equipment and rotate things in and out of my, my team. I just like to see what my options are. And oh, once again, we're kicked out. I'm guessing this is another region that we were at in the past. Although we've never seen those tower bugs, so that's kind of cool. Right, let's try on the T-Rex, and while I'm here, whatever, we'll just heal up. We'll heal up Mouth as well as Medea. Nails is getting a little down as well, and since there's no way for him to heal, other than it seems like this and possibly sleeping at the inn, I want to take advantage. Whoa! Okay, now the damage might have been exaggerated because... Because, 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 we are fighting old foes. But even still, it looks like that attacked twice. So maybe the raw stat, the strength stat or the offensive stat, whatever it is, maybe it's a little less with this wind sword, but it gives you increased swipes. Huh, we'll, we'll keep this for a little bit and really assess whether or not it's an appropriate keeper or if the psych BM is better to have. Because I will say, I'm so paranoid because these fucking boxes are always closed. I, oh yeah, it was the fire card we picked up. I just, I hate the idea of leaving those chests behind and leaving something behind. I'm just nuts, you guys, is what it is. I am a neurotic mess when it comes to being meticulous about picking up everything, and I probably don't need to be. But as I did when we were in the other area, I'm just gonna run back through myself just to spare you like five fights, and I'm gonna be my crazy self and make sure I got all the treasure chests. So I'll meet you guys outside of this door in just a second. All right, friends, this is why I like to poke my head in and out of doors that I've looked in before. So I decided to be a weirdo and look back at all of the chests and looky here, I found a water card. So there is a method to my madness and madness is no exaggeration. So now I will part ways with you all and I will meet you outside of the door. Assuming I don't find another chest that I overlooked, we'll find out in just a second. 
All right, and we are back here to hop into this little transportation device. Seems like it was just that water card that I ended up skipping on. And yes, I did actually look in every single one of the chests, again, just to be sure. So with that room out of the way, it seems like we've exhausted every single path that we can take with the exception of that water door that's at the very top of this area that Oh my gosh, now I'm wondering if I should have just gone through the door to begin with so that I could have ruled out whether or not that is a section that we have to explore or if it's a dead end or if it's just another room with more fucking water cards. I'm not sure what is up there, but I think what I will go ahead and do is we will call this not only an episode, but a session. We'll just wrap it up. We've gotten 12 videos done in total for this batch, which I think is fairly fairly good so what i'm thinking friends is when we come back together in episode number 48 i might just bring you guys back when i'm at the top of the tower so of course i will save i'll replenish my bottles i guess i can do that with you all in tow and i will just head straight to the top we'll meet at that water door we'll enter it naturally see what's on the other side and if it is an area that seems like it's going to propel us forward oh oops are my bottles all full? They might be because I've been using my cloaks to replenish HP. We're at the point now in the game where I guess the bottles don't hold as much value. They're just kind of there. So adds further, hmm, a further bit of bulk to my argument that I wish you could sell them or discard them, but I digress. It's not the point of, of what I need to be telling you guys right now. So we'll just go through that door at the top and then at that point we'll figure out whether we wanna keep going in that direction or head back through the water door down here and go back to Chesney's school. I don't know, you guys. I have no idea what direction this game is going to take us in, but as always, we will find out together. So until then, everyone, I hope that you all are doing well. Please take good care of yourselves. And I, your host, Rabbit, look forward to meeting up with you in a couple of weeks when we resume gameplay for Paladin's Quest with episode 48, kickstarting that recording session. I'll see you guys then. Take care until then. 